So good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's Sunday morning here in London, just after nine o'clock. And uh, this is Lizzie and Justin from Third Space. We are live for another week of our Turning Towards Life project. And I want to say welcome to you, Lizzie, of course, and welcome to everyone who's joining us, whether you're in our Facebook group live, on YouTube, on a podcast, who knows where. We're so glad that you're with us. And i um, so glad to be able to do this. I'm incredibly excited about talking about this source, Lizzie, so I'm not going to planning on saying any more preamble apart from hello to you and give us a chance to dive in when you're ready. So this beautiful poem by Julia Fehrenbacher <laughs> is a delight to read and it's already been in our community a little bit in different spaces and it seemed to me that every time it got bought in one of those spaces everybody absolutely loved it and it brought people so much so I thought it would be an ideal source for us today. Um, the other really lovely thing is that Julia is in our Facebook group so Julia I want to say thank you so much for this piece of complete brilliance and funnily enough my lovely sister Holly, Holly Holden posted this poem on her page on Instagram and her channel on Instagram and somehow Julia is connected to us through another friend of Holly's as well so, so Julia found us through my sister posting this on Instagram so now that Holly tagged me in that thing and now Julia knows who we are and, and can listen to this and I think Justin you and I and other people have experienced what it's like to have your poetry run through us and inspire a conversation and I think it's a real treat for whoever has written something to have their poem read back to them and talked about by other people and treated with reverence and I know Julia's already very appreciative of the way that we've held her poem so far and the way Holes has posted it and it just feels really wonderful to know that there's a human being who knows we're doing this who wrote it mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful for that as well. And just to say <clears throat> where this first came up was in, in our year long program that we've mentioned to you probably lots of times, everybody. This is, this came from the poetry day, poetry retreat that we did in amongst our year long program where we have time to be inside and feel breathed into you by poetry for all kinds of different reasons that make sense when you're in the program and this got read and I felt so moved by it and the person who chose this poem I think they'd be happy for me to mention her as well is called Julie and she chose this for a friend a friend of hers that she wanted to read this to and, and then she read it to, to us in a, by way of reading it to her friend and it moved me so much that I thought oh that's an amazing one. I'm going to find which book that's in. And so that's how this came into my world. And it feels a very appropriate thing for me today anyway, because I think as, as you all know, that I'm, of, as of this Sunday, quite imminently going to be giving birth to a small baby. And so this poem is particularly moving to me because of how it addresses that part of me that is doing that. So I feel very sort of personally moved and helped and supported by this poem as well. So the other thing to say is that somewhere near this source will be some inf information from Julia around how to find her poetry, what her website is, how to contact her, so that we can all feel like if there's a way we want to find more of her poetry, find out more about her, we can do. So we're going to post that information for everybody as well. And thank you, Julia, for sending that through to us. So here we go. Lizzie, before you read, yes. I think we're having this difficulty with your right. microphone that we had last time. Sorry, I'll get my main out. Well, it's not really your hair. I think it's the, for like some it? reason, the volume that's coming through that microphone. Yeah, yeah. Is so, that better? Oh, it's much better. Okay. It'll make it much easier for people to hear you. Cool. Great. Okay. So this is called The Cure for It All by Julia Therenbacher. 
go gently today. Don't hurry or think about the next thing. Walk with the quiet trees. Can you believe how brave they are, how kind? Model your life after theirs. Blow kisses at yourself in the mirror, especially when you think you've messed up. Forgive yourself for not meeting your unreasonable expectations. You are human, not God. Don't be so arrogant. Praise fresh air, clean water, good dogs. Spin something from joy. Open a window even if it's cold outside. Sit, close your eyes, breathe. Allow the river of it all to pulse through eyelashes, fingertips, bare toes. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe until you feel your bigness, until the sun rises in your veins. Breathe until you stop needing anything to be different. So as always, I'm going to re read this too. And what I want to say before I read this, first of all, is thank you to Julia for this poem. And second of all, if you're listening, unless you're driving or cycling or something like that, as we know many people on the podcast do, maybe take a moment to, to stop so you can let these words really reach you. It might be a wonderful thing to do to see if you can receive these words in the, uh, the way that they are written. I'll do my best to read them in the way that they are written as well. The cure for it all. Go gently today. Don't hurry or think about the next thing. Walk with the quiet trees. Can you believe how brave they are? How kind? Model your life after theirs. Blow kisses at yourself in the mirror, especially when you think you've messed up. Forgive yourself for not meeting your unreasonable expectations. You are human, not God. Don't be so arrogant. Praise, fresh air, clean water, Good dogs, spin something from joy. Open a window, even if it's cold outside. Sit, close your eyes, breathe. Allow the river of it all to pulse through eyelashes, fingertips, bare toes. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe until you feel your bigness, until the sun rises in your veins. Breathe until you stop needing anything to be different. Thank you, Justin. I love being read to you. Mm. It's just such a beautiful thing to receive and just breathe in and actually allowing it all to pulse through myself. I'm really grateful for that. And that this is the practice that we have. How beautiful to read to each other, just that simple thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this, I mean, this, there's so much in here. And so many wonderful lines that you could just take and just have that one line. And I think my favorite line is the breathe in, breathe out. Breathe until you feel your bigness, until the sun rises in your veins. And then of course the breathe until you need anything, you stop needing anything to be different. And I feel like the breath is such a gift to us. And until it's brought present, it's so in the background of our lives. Of course, it's happening all the time that we're breathing. And yet, 
rarely are we receiving the gift of our breath truly in all of its glory and all of its healing and all of its capacity to generate awareness and relaxation and sanity and so this invitation into the breath feels such a gift and for anybody who does any kind of conscious breathing or yoga or meditation or anything i'm sure this will be really familiar what what kind of power lies in the way that we breathe and the way that we have this source all the time permanently available to us to help us return and for me this whole poem feels like a big return a return to something and and i think it's why it appealed so deeply to me for a source for us because i think turning towards life is about returning like returning home returning to ourselves returning to our centers returning to one another there's a kind of way that we go so far away from ourselves and this encapsulates this feeling of coming home to me and sends me into a kind of connectedness, a kind of realness that I feel is just to be a person and, and, and feel connected to life. I think of what you just said, Lizzie, for me, is the heart of this, which is uh, what it takes for us to feel connected to life. And I, I think it's, um, it is not surprising that so many of us don't feel connected to life because in order to feel connected to life, there's really a lot we have to face. I mean, it might sound like an easy thing. I always think it sounds like an easy thing to be to turn back into your life or to be connected to life or to feel the, the depth and the breadth of our own presence in the world. But to say that would be to forget that in order to be connected to life, we also end up being connected to the finiteness of our own lives. Like we can't be connected to life if we're not also prepared to be connected to death and we can't be connected to joy unless we're also prepared to feel the inevitable suffering and difficulties of life. And, and because of that, it's really easy for so many of us, I'm, I'm really just talking about myself here, but to kind of skate over the surface of things and to be far away. And there's a way in which being far away from our own lives protects us from all the difficulty at the cost of also protecting us from our own aliveness so it's a it's a big old deal to to turn back to feel what julia is inviting us into to feel um the possibility of joy to allow the river of all of life to pulse through every part of us to feel our own bigness this is not i really appreciate it's one of the reasons i really appreciate the, these words because it seems to me this is not some trivial or shallow move. It's a deep move to let ourselves feel all this. And it, it takes a lot as well as giving us a lot. And I also think that many of us in our culture that has been sort of torn from its roots, we've lost in our, for many of us in our culture, any sort of deep sense of, of, um, kinship with the earth or deep sense of rootedness in the mythology of being a person you know the sort of the mystery of being a person we really need words like this to bring us home again mm. and yeah. i yeah go on i was going to say what's occurring to me when you say that as well is it's not it's not something created and written at the level of trying to make things better it's like there's a depth here that's mm -hmm. so nurturing 
and it's not trying to solve all of our problems or take things away mm. it's speaking from a depth that i so appreciate that in some way allows us to come back to those things in a different way if we were to let this pulse through us and let it affect us and i love that invitation justin you made of you know when you were reading for us to just breathe and be a bit a little more present than we were before to receive what this is and then how does our life look when we've allowed this through us just for a little while how do we feel about the same thing that was troubling us before it, it probably still troubling but we might find a little more spaciousness or a little more of a quality that would help us be in it and it feels like a big invitation to something much larger than our circumstances which i think is what i mean when i say life that there's a way of turning towards something that isn't all of the circumstances of our lives added up together but something more about the truth of who we are and our humanity and our capacity to to be present to love to find our way through things with perspective you know to hold things to right size things to hold things as as they are with some kind of objectivity rather than all the ways that we get completely entangled with the circumstances of our lives and the happenings of the world and all kinds of things and it's not to say that we should turn away from those things but turn towards them with a way of being with a contactfulness with with ourselves that this poem really inspires so who who would we be in the same circumstance if we allowed this to deeply affect us i think that's what's so beautiful to me is that it returns me to a place in myself that has me be braver you know to to really look and to really be courageous and allow something very real to be here that's different to just me being bashed around by life i love what you're saying about um i've now forgotten the word that you said oh you said objectivity you said it's coming out our lives with some kind of objectivity and i was what stirred in me as you've said that this is there are lots of different kinds of objectivity which seems a funny thing to say but because objectivity is meant to be like the truth but i suppose it, it it seems true to me that there are lots of different ways in which we can come at the circumstances of our lives and one of them is rooted in what we've been saying that julia's words invite us into so strongly is to come at our lives from our knowing that we are life because I, I, it seems to me and i've never thought about it this way until we've been talking about it now that, that that's one of the big mistakes that we make is that when we come when we come at life without allowing to ourselves to feel that we are actually expressions of life, that life is coming through us. That's when we, we make these twin mistakes that we've talked about a number of times here before of imagining that we should be way big. Somehow I'm meant to be able to ride above the circumstances of my life, which is where Julia says, you're human, not God. Don't be so arrogant. Like I ought to be able to have everything in order. I ought to have completed everything. I ought not to suffer. I ought not to make mistakes. I ought never to be confused. I ought, all of that. So there's a sort of um, detachment we can get into and the detachment from the, the ground of our own lives can easily have us make this mistake that somehow I'm meant to be all powerful. And if I'm not, and I can't keep everything under control, something terrible is happening. 
and then the counterpoint to it, which I think is even more fully expressed in these words, is where we, where because we don't feel life coming through us, we feel so tiny and so alone and so uh, powerless and so absent that it's very hard for us to be in contact with the joy and pleasure of really simple things about or the depth of them of being alive, of which I think you talked about the breath earlier, which I think breath is just such a great place to start. What an amazing thing it is to be able to breathe. It's the most amazing thing. I can breathe. And not only can I breathe, I know I'm breathing. So I'm a kind of being that can know stuff and experience stuff. I'm experiencing breathing. So that's what I'm getting from our conversation and from Julia's words is this sense that when we make the move to um, open ourselves to life coming through. We don't make our difficulties less difficult. We don't stop that I'm ill or frightened or there's some situation that I wish were different. We don't change any of that. But what we, what we do change is our sense of being fully in the, in the flow of life. And that's a great it's two things. It's a great liberation in one sense, but it's also a, um, a great, um, oh, I can't think of the word of this. I was going to say connector, like uh, knowing ourselves in the family of things this way. Mm. And then we don't need to um, need anything right in that moment to be as different as we thought we needed it to be. so beautiful to hear justin and i this throughness like life coming through us there's something about the nature of of throughness that also implies that we are something bigger that is of life like you go through a tunnel the tunnel still remains like there's something untouchable implied in having life flow through us and you know I was saying about the, the, our true nature our, the depth of truth of who we are as beings that that we can connect to through the breath and noticing it's kind of hard to say this and like I don't 100% have the language but when I connect to life being lived through me i can find the implicit nature of myself more readily available than i'm in charge here or something like the the i is less of the determinant of what happens and therefore it's a, a freer life where i can allow life to run through me like the river, all of it pulsing through eyelashes, fingertips and bare toes, like I can be washed through rather than clinging. Like there's a, um, there's a relaxation that comes in my body when I know that life is not to be clinged onto, but to have a way of surrendering to it coming through me and living through me life living itself through me and i am that too but that there's a there's a there's a movement in it there's a freedom in it there's a flow in it that feels so much less burdensome than i've got to have my life locked down together keep everything controlled keep everything just as it needs to be in order for my preferences to be met and me to feel comfortable. It just feels really um, like a liberating way to be a person, to be a throughness rather than a holder honorer or a clinger. And I guess that's for me very present right now because having a huge big experience that's going to flow through me in the next coming days and weeks, I can feel that there's a way I can be with that and feel less afraid, feel less 
like if I don't know it how am I gonna handle it and more like oh this is another piece of life that gets to flow through me now Mm -hmm. so it feels very liberating to read and hear that and that that line comes just before the breath line so letting things be a throughness letting me be a throughness treating myself like a throughness and knowing that my breath can be the contactfulness that I can cultivate, that I can, like you said, I can know things, I I know I'm breathing, I can work with that, I have capacity to be conscious about breathing. And then things feel like, oh, things are possible that weren't before if I think that way, if I feel that way, if I have a story about myself that's that, than a story about myself that's different than that. It's really touching hearing you talk about the throughness given what's coming in in your own life, Lizzie, in the coming days and weeks. And I'm thinking as you're saying this, that it's, of course, it's particularly true for giving the whole process of growing and giving birth to another human that's where we see it most fully but it's also true of pretty much everything that we do in our lives in in its own way which is that life is coming through all the time it's unavoidably the case and i was just feeling into as you're talking i i suppose this is true for many of us that um one of the ways i catch on often to being at one or other end of the poles here that Julia talks about in her poem, particularly the one which is um, about trying to be God, is actually in my own breath. So I, I know that there is a way that I hold my breath when I'm trying hard to get life to go my own way. And I can feel it in a sort of, um, if I really pay attention, it's like a, it's like a sort of a clenched fist in my own chest and I'm hardly breathing all the way through because it's it's like if I kind of steal myself up somehow I think what it really is is somehow I'll get life to go my own way and that might be the way I want but actually more often for me it's the way I think I'm meant to want it given other people's expectations which are not exactly the same thing but they're pretty close on so I'm meant to be together. I'm meant to know what I'm doing. I'm meant to be clever. I'm meant to be, I'm meant to never forget to respond to an email. I'm meant to remember everybody's birthday. I'm meant, I mean, uh, tiny things and giant things. And so the, as a way of thinking about practice in Julia's poem, the line that really moves me is breathe until you stop needing anything to be different. And it's not, I don't think it's not like we never need things to be different. Like there are things that we, it really helps to dedicate ourselves to, to change things in the world. So to, but to have a practice where we can experience moments where we don't feel like we need to hold on and change everything all the time. That's part of our process of returning to having life flow through us and then paradoxically that's often the place from which we can actually act to take care of things so much more fully so i'm just loving this i'm i'm loving just for me a way of thinking about what would happen if i really dedicated myself often to breathing until i can feel what it's like to stop needing anything to be different even the things i most want to change even the things i most want to have happen what a beautiful invitation into being in our day-to-day lives not just as an idea but as a practice this is and also how lovely for us to feel like oh if i breathed maybe i could give up that needing something to be different like it just paints a possible picture of like oh if i could use my breath and i could feel my bigness maybe my desperation for this to be different would shift like what an experiment for us all to get up to yeah and see I mean for ourselves like what if I take something that I really want to be different and I breathe and I breathe and I let this poem 
rush through me, just like a river would rush past us if we were standing on the banks. And see what that means for each of us, see if we could. Particularly, Lizzie, for the things that we know, the one place to start with this is to start with the things that we know that our efforts cannot make different. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get older. I might be ill. People get ill. Yeah. yeah. I'll die. Everybody will die. Um, you know, that's giant stuff. And then there's smaller stuff. To find mm -hmm. that we can be big. What I love about this, what you're saying, is to find our bigness right in the midst of what we can't change and mm -hmm. to not equate our bigness with having to be in charge of it all. Yeah. That's where the sort of the undoing of our knottedness might come. Yeah, or, or a person, a husband or a wife or a child, like something as big as that, that mm. we're in, you know, a person we're in relationship with. How could I let this be here and not need them to be different for a mm. moment? And how might that have me talk to them? How might it have me be with them, see them, understand them? Oh my goodness. So I'm just seeing our time, Justin. I <clears throat> realise we're a little bit over and I'm so grateful for the centeringness of this poem. So grateful to Julia. So grateful to us for doing this, for the way that our brilliant community seems to be able to reach out and that Julia came to be in contact with us. is so lovely. And thank you to Holly for posting this poem and Julia knowing Holly through someone and just feels very delightful and we way of finding out more about Julia as well other than simply googling her but information that she's provided to us that we'll post as well and we are grateful as ever that anyone is here listening whether now or in the future or any time and we will be back next week in some form it might be a pre-record if you're listening live now it might be a pre-record that justin and i have done and it might not be who knows where we're going to be next week um but i'm just very grateful to be here today and thank you everybody for listening and being part of this with us it means a very much different kind of day a different kind of week a different kind of everything really for me and i know for justin as well so thank you for adding to our lives by being here and enabling us to cultivate this amazing weekly ritual that we have. Mm. Thank you, everybody. We'll post Julia's details on our Facebook group and also on turning towards dot life. And um, I've also got in mind that we've got opportunities to come and learn with us coming up in November. So you can also head across if you want to we are third space dot org, which is third space website and you'll find details of our foundations of coaching program there that's happening in november and also the year program that you've been talking about lizzie and um that's right let's see whether we'll be live next week or one of our nifty pre-recorded conversations we, we have um a set of conversations we've recorded that i'm feeling very proud of so we're going to get them into the world somehow maybe the first one will be next week we'll see yeah all right, Lizzie, thank you so much. And thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Everybody. Bye.